The opinions and suggestions expressed in the following program are solely those of the participants and are not necessarily endorsed by KRMG, Cox Media Group Incorporated, or the program sponsors. This following program is sponsored by Causeway LLC. Information in this broadcast is not intended as an investment, tax, or financial advice. Matthew Moore is not a licensed investment advisor and speaks solely from his experience and opinions. All information in this broadcast is for entertainment or educational purposes only. Matthew Moore, Causeway LLC, and Cox Media Group Tulsa are not responsible for the success or failure of any person's investment decisions or purchases. Matthew Moore, Causeway LLC, and Cox Media Group Tulsa makes no and expressly disclaims all representations, warranties, and guarantees with respect to this broadcast and its sponsors. Investing in any market is inherently risky and can be financially dangerous. Invest at your own risk. Gather knowledge in the world of cryptocurrency right now on 1023 KRMG, Tulsa's news and talk. Welcome to Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. Matthew is locally based right here in Tulsa. Questions, comments, concerns? Call 918-460-5764 or send us an open mic using the KRMG app. Now, here's Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. And good Sunday evening to you. My name is Russell Mills, and this is indeed Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. We are live and local in the big city of Tulsa. Are you up for some adventure? You ready to go digging for that digital gold? Well, we're here to try to clear up some of the mysteries and confusion about, oh, bitcoins and non-fungible tokens and all that kind of stuff that's going on in the world of crypto. And we found the right guy to explain it to us. His name is Matthew J. Moore, and he is joining us from a remote location today. Matthew, good evening. Good evening, everybody. This is such a great time to go live and talk about a technology that is going to literally change the world. So if you've got questions uh, about Bitcoin, about cryptocurrency, this is the place to be. This is where we are having a conversation that honestly, if you stick around and educate yourself, it could benefit you greatly in the near future. I am actually currently in the mountains of Colorado hiding away, but I am here live with you guys. I would never miss this show. In fact, I'd like to introduce uh, my co-host, Eric Cooper. Eric, why don't you say hello? What is going on, KRMG audience? Guys, we are so happy to be here today. Um, Matt, obviously, uh, I don't know if you heard, so I got a flat tire. I rode my bike. Uh, I would rather have ridden my bike in Colorado to get to the station today. But you know what? We're all good. It's it, we're, we're here. The funny right. part is he rode right past my house. <laughs> I, I could have given him a ride. I didn't know. <laughs> we, well, but the, funny, know. the funny... The funny thing is, is when I heard that, when you said that you, you got a flat tire and you were going to ride your bike, I was like, well, why don't you just get an Uber? So I didn't know <laughs> if you had your bike in the back of the truck or what. No, um, no, no, no. It was, it's, 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 uh, I actually was waiting for Hibden Tires. So, uh, non, non-payment sponsor, shout out to Hibden for taking care of us. But today, great guest, Matt, because once again, we're going to talk about Tulsa. So our listeners, most of us are here, right here in Tulsa. If you don't understand how amazing it is for Tulsa to have the footprint for cryptocurrency, you need to start understanding. We're pulling a lot of these guests from our backyard. So we've got, um, we've just got phenomenal, uh, phenomenal people here. So we're going to bring in Stephen, uh, Stephen Taylor, and he's the chief information officer from Vast Bank. And um, it's a Vast Bank, it's a local bank and very, very crypto friendly. And so um, we're going to uh, dive into that a little bit hot today. Yeah, that's right. You know, we're going to find out, uh, literally, I, I wanted to have him on to find out why why this Tulsa Bank is is embracing Bitcoin and leading the way in a type of adoption. Um, we'll also have uh, the vice president of American BitPower, uh, Chris Ransdell. Uh, he'll join us in studio as well. And, uh, and there's actually a, a funny connection uh, to this whole story between the two of them, because uh, I think I played matchmaker. I think I could confidently say that I played matchmaker. Matchmaker, uh, with, matchmaker. With these two. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it was it was so funny because uh, American BitPower, you know, they're a local Bitcoin mining operation here in Tulsa. And uh, a few months ago, uh, I was talking to them and uh, they were having the normal kind of headache having to work with the tr- traditional banking system uh, when it comes to crypto, which is not honestly a big surprise. You know, we hear so many stories around this topic um, and, and really no bank wanted to really touch their operation or their money because it was involved in in Bitcoin. Um, but thanks to a conversation that we had, um, I asked Chris, I was like, hey, Chris, 
have you reached out to Vast Bank? Uh, and the reason why I even brought it up was because I had heard rumor, and I'm going to verify these rumors today on the show, that Vast Bank was actually the first bank in the United States to do a Bitcoin transaction as a bank. So, uh, so, I mean, Matt, that's again, that's another big point. Tulsa, it, it, we have a lot going on. When we went down to Miami, we talked about Miami ad nauseum, but we had a contingency, contingency of people, and I, I hope that it's bigger. We're want, we want Russell reporting from Miami next year. I'm oh, yeah, down. no, absolutely. I'm down, but, yeah. but, I, but I want to know if this story is true. Uh, yeah, I, I do, too. Steven, it, there, can we can we yeah. say that this that Vast Bank was you're you're on yeah. that was the first bank in the U.S. to do a, like official Bitcoin transaction? Yes, we were. Yeah. Wow. Can, yeah. Can you tell us like how that came about and and when and where? And I'm curious. I'm taking over your show, Matt. Just sit, sit there for a no, second. No, you're you're good. You're good. Yeah. So we started doing Bitcoin and not just Bitcoin, but just all cryptocurrency analysis and operations about four years ago. We got really serious about two years ago. We've been going through. I think everybody knows the OCC and the federal banking system, which we are regulated by, is not real crypto friendly. That's the um, uh, OCC the is the Oklahoma Corporation Commission. Actually, that's the no, that's the Office of the Crypt, uh, Crypt uh, Controller of the Currency. Oh, OK. Yeah. So it's the actual federal. So we are a okay. national bank. Um, we're not just an Oklahoma bank. We're based here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but we are a national bank and we are nationally regulated. And one of the things that prevents a lot of state banks from par participating in this is that New York has their bit license and New Jersey has their bit license. And it's just kind of a mess if you're not. Well, uh, Brian Brooks, the OCC controller, uh, actually came out and said, we're approving national banks. And then we were like, okay, all of this research and all this preparation we've been doing, we're ready, right? So we went, uh, as soon as they made the announcement, we were the first bank to ask OCC for official approval. First one that granted it, first one that did the live transaction. Wow, right here in Tulsa. Okay, Matt, here's your show back. No, it's yeah, <laughs> no, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, this is why I wanted to have these conversations and and bring guys like Stephen on uh, to talk about this because there's you know it's every day in my mind it seems like Tulsa is breaking ground. I mean, Oklahoma in general, there's some really great influencers and people that I've met uh, that are trying to move forward and move the needle uh, for our city, for our state when it comes to the cryptocurrency space. And so I'm actually excited to dive more into that topic and into this topic in today's uh, show. Um, but honestly, there's been a lot of news. In fact, I think, Matt, Eric, yeah, uh, did yeah, you, did yeah. you uh, we're, we're adding, up some news for me? We're adding even to the show notes as we speak. So everybody saw UFC last night. Um, Conor McGregor, um, I don't, I don't I can make a snap pun right there, but I'm not going to. But oh, his leg, every, right? yeah, yes, yeah, snapped Ouch. his his tibia. But every single fighter had a Crypto.com shirt on. So I again, why. this is huh, it looks like it's growing. Um, but you've got that, <laughs> and so that's phenomenal. But then also, um, you know, you go to a the, the the most simplified version of taking payments for your small business, and that's usually Square. Uh, so Jack Dorsey and and uh, you know the CEO of Twitter, he and Square are going to connect and make a new hardware wallet. Yeah, you know, I, I, honestly, it's not surprising. I mean, but it, it, it's an interesting development because we know Jack Dorsey is really friendly and a, a big proponent of Bitcoin. Um, but there are plenty of hardware wallets out there that people can buy and use to self-custody their Bitcoin. Um, but the interesting part about this is Jack, he has a lot of advantages when it comes to the marketing aspect of it, the influence. Uh, you know, I'm sure he'll make a, a big splash and he'll make hardware wallets more common possibly uh, for self-custody for self -custody purposes. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what a hardware wallet. You're probably listening to this program, and this is maybe the first time you've heard the word hardware wallet. Um, but it is a physical device that often looks like a USB device. Mm -hmm. uh, it literally gives you the ability to be in full control of your cryptocurrency, and it's a way to make sure that you are safe. You're providing a way for your private key, which is very important uh, when it comes to managing your cryptocurrency to never be exposed to the internet. And honestly, the cool part about it is it gives you full control 
of also your your backup seed phrase. So if you ever lost your wallet, you could restore it uh, with your your backup seed phrase. Uh, and the thing that people have to remember when it comes to this space and when it comes to to mobile wallets or hardware wallets is that the cryptocurrency is never stored on the actual device itself. Basically, what is stored on the device is your private key, which grants you the ability, like I said, to move your funds across this decentralized uh, decentralized ledger system. Uh, so, and didn't you buy a hardware? wallet recently, Eric? Yeah. So I got this uh, letter in the mail and, um, and they said that they needed me to, to give them all of my private information. And so hopefully they're going to send, no, I'm just kidding. Don't oh, do that. No, crypto, no. <laughs> crypto 101 is uh, hold on to it because we're going to, what is about 6 million Bitcoins or, I mean, there's tons of Bitcoin that's, that's lost, right? So we got to keep at it. And, you know, we only have, so my, my response on this is went to Ledger, go straight to the company and uh, buy their nano. Um, that's, that's, what I did. And so uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more, I assume. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, it's it's like I use the hardware wallets much like a, a bank account, whereas the mobile wallet, I'll use more like a wallet in your actual pocket, you know. So, yeah, but we got a lot to cover in this show. Um, and you know what? If you listen to the show and you like the content and you want to learn more, uh, please go to my website, Matthew J. Moore or Matt J. Moore. I apologize. It's mattjmore.com. I've got all my videos, my my Amazon best-selling book, Foundations for Liberty, where I talk about the monetary system. Good key information to know when you're getting into the cryptocurrency space. Got to know the problem before you know the solution. So, uh, and if you want somebody to hold your hand, I'm here for you. You know, and I'll tell you, you want somebody who knows this stuff. You don't want to just go diving in. So the wallets are one good example. People yesterday buying up UFC coin because they thought it was owned by the UFC would be another example. It's not. <laughs> so there is a UFC coin, and then there's the UFC, and then UFC signs a deal with Crypto.com. Are they related? No. And so the price has fluctuated wildly. You need to have a guide through this jungle, right? That's why we're doing this show with Matthew J. Moore. We'll be back with more of it here on KRMG after a quick timeout. You're listening to 1023 KRMG, Tulsa's News and Talk. Welcome back to Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. My name is Russell Mills. Thank you for hanging out with us on this Sunday. We are live and local in the big city of Tulsa. Well, I say we, I mean most of us, because Matthew is off in the hinterlands somewhere in the Colorado Rockies doing, oh, heaven knows what. But he would, we couldn't keep him away. He's like, nope, I'm going to be there for the show. So joining us through the miracles of modern technology, your host for Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore, not coincidentally, named Matthew J. Moore. Hey, Matt. Hey, Russell. Welcome, everybody. I'm just enjoying my Bitcoin sabbatical uh, right now in the mountains of Colorado. Uh, but, you know, I, this is a great opportunity. I never miss the opportunity to teach and share about cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, Bitcoin. And we've got a great show. Uh, we've been talking about some of the things that are coming up. And uh, you've got to stay tuned because we've got some great uh, people in studio with us. And, uh, in fact, I'm going to let our co-host, uh, Eric Cooper, uh, he's with us as well. Eric, why don't you say hello? What's going on again, everybody? Um, we do this at five o'clock every Sunday. Uh, you should check us out. Even on Fourth of July last week, we uh, we ran it. We reran a show. We didn't. We, didn't, uh, we celebrated Fourth of July with our families. But if you want to go back and listen, that's where a lot of people do because they're not available at five o'clock on Sunday. So go back. Go to KMG.com. You can just Google cryptocurrency with Matt J. Moore, um, and then you'll see an on-demand site, and you can go listen to uh, nine or ten of our past shows. I think we had one that went into oblivion, but the famous um, lost episode. The famous the. Everybody needs Long story. one. Everybody needs one. But today, some really, really cool stuff here is, uh, Matt, you also have your YouTube page, which you post um, the shows on, too. So if you are that, we're going to be putting it on Spotify and Apple here soon, too. Yeah. Yeah. My YouTube channel is Crypto More and my website is mattjmore.com. So if you are interested in continuing your education in the cryptocurrency space, uh, please feel free, uh, drop a question, reach out to me. Maybe you want somebody to hold your hand as you navigate this space because it is a tricky space if you're not up to speed on how it works and, and what's kosher, what's not kosher. So I'm here to help keep, uh, keep people safe. Uh, and that's why we bring in guests like we have today. In fact, I'm going to have Eric Cooper 
Cooper introduce um, our guest today. So right here to my right, we've got uh, Chris Ransdell, and he is the vice president from American BitPower. You guys are familiar. We've had uh, folks from American BitPowder. BitPower, not BitPowder, because that's a different company. <laughs> That's a totally different kind of powder. Yeah. So, Chris, can you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, your role with the company? Uh, well, simply put, I'm surrounded by people smarter than me about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, and I have to keep them straight sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, I, I usually sit there and do finances and take care of books. But since then, I fell in love with the algorithms. I'm a math geek. So, I just I all of a sudden discovered if you're good at math, you can see the future. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes, 100%. And because of the Matrix, right? That's a different story, though. Well, yeah, we, okay. yeah, I am Neo. I am Neo. <laughs> <laughs> we also have the uh, the Chief Information Officer from Vast Bank, Stephen Taylor. And uh, Stephen, go ahead and say hello. And once again, uh, you, we heard from you in segment one. Let us know, what do you do with Vast? Thanks again for having me on. I really appreciate it, Eric. And uh, my name is Stephen Taylor, as you said, and I am the CIO at, at Vast. So for those who aren't familiar with CIO roles, essentially I'm the head of the technology department at, at Vast Bank. And at, and at Vast Bank in, in general, in addition to that, I'm helping lead the, what we call our transformation program. So redoing the way we do banking and the technology use of that to try to help make banking better for all of our customers. Awesome. Well, that's that's fantastic because you know the the reputation of Vast Bank is definitely getting around in a good way, especially in the cryptocurrency space. In fact, I think I played matchmaker with the two of you, both Chris and Stephen. <laughs> right on. Uh, and yeah. so I, I'm actually curious. I want to kind of hear this story. Chris, can you explain to me uh, how Vast Bank came to save the day? It, it was a miracle, and you were the saint that did it. <laughs> so uh, we uh, the the, comp the company America Bit Power had been with another bank that will remain nameless uh, to protect the guilty. And on April 1st, I coincidentally just came in to order some more checks and they said, are you here to close your account? I said, are you, is, it, is this an April Fool's joke? Are we kidding? And they said, no, you should have got the letter. We're no longer doing business with anybody that has business with cryptocurrency. And we had 10 days to find another bank for an entire company, which is a bit of a task. And that's when I called you, Matt. And I said, Matt, who do we know? And uh, we had another mutual friend that wanted to, again, we'll remain nameless, but he, he said, we don't have the regulatory staffing to handle being a cryptocurrency bank of any sorts. And that's where you said, well, have you talked to Vast? I had, I cold called Vast Bank and somehow I said the right magic combination of words because <laughs> uh, I was sitting in a boardroom with Stephen, uh, the CEO, um, and several other bankers there very quickly, a beautiful boardroom, downtown Tulsa. Uh, and being welcomed with open arms, which was a very breath of fresh, very big breath of fresh air. Second national, absolutely, yeah. Second national bank was not the name of the bank, right? No, I, okay, just no. making sure. I don't think there's such thing. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a second. There was a, there was another, you know, <laughs> fraction. Number. Well, well, here's here's the thing, you know, that I wanted to ask Stephen is now American BitPower. They are in. Uh, Bitcoin cryptocurrency mining. Uh, they got a mining operation. That's kind of their line of work uh, in the crypto space. But my, my question to you, Stephen, is why why did Vast Bank decide to become crypto friendly? Well, I think the fundamental basis behind that question is we do see the cryptocurrency as a core part of financial markets going forward, full stop. Hmm. And one of the things that's different from us from other banks is kind of our core philosophy is giving bank customers better financial services and giving them choice. And a lot of banks are, are essentially saying, look, until this is 100% completely clear and uh, clear and understood and all of our processes are 100% done, we're not going to have anything to do with it. And so they're, they're very much uh, waiting for this to develop before they participate. And we think it's a, it, we think it's something that our customers are and the, the general population is already participating in and wants to participate in this process, and we want to give them choice in the process. And frankly, it's um, if you do it on your own, and the way the reason that you're doing this program is to educate people to do it in a way that's safe, it, the, the reality is it cannot be safe, right? You can do it in a way that can get yourself in trouble, and we believe that one of the ways that we can do that is help provide a safe mechanism for people to participate in that market. That's awesome. For sure. Yeah. Well, now this, this might be a, a little bit off topic, but I'm super curious. I, I, you know, so there's a, there's a thing that if you're, if you're a listener 
Uh, there's something called SHA-256. For those of you who don't know what that is, this is one of the components that makes up Bitcoin. Okay, It's an algorithm used in Bitcoin's cryptographic hash function. And SHA-256 is nothing new, but has been around for years and was developed by the NSA. And it stands for Secure Hash Algorithm. So, so Stephen, my question is this. I had heard rumor, I don't know if it's true, that you worked on SHA-256. Yeah, so so it's actually been around for a lot longer even than Bitcoin. Um, so the secure hash algorithms are essentially a one-way encryption mechanism to uh, to that Bitcoin uses as a way to test and sign algorithms. And I was uh, deeply involved in cryptocurrency. My undergraduate at Oklahoma State, my graduate at MIT. But that was way back in 1990. I'm really dating myself there. <laughs> but uh, my professor, shout out to uh, Rick Moore at uh, Oklahoma State, really encouraged me to go into my passion. I did that, de delved into cryptocurrency, I mean, into, into cryptography. Um, and as I did, I, I wrote a bunch. Uh, NSA actually submitted a bunch of requests to the university, and I fulfilled a couple of them later when I was doing some open source projects, ones called uh, OpenSSL actually saw some of my source code in the library that came from the NSA. So that was kind of cool to kind of see it go full circle. Huh. Okay. So so what you're telling me is there's a chance, a possibility that you might actually be Satoshi Nakamoto, yeah. the creator yeah. of Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I Did was, we just I, crack the secret? I, I, if I was, I couldn't say it. So <laughs> you don't look like a Satoshi to me. I just, I, this just, this just me. But nobody knows what Satoshi looks it, like. Exactly. Satoshi could be many people. Yes. Yes. Now, I guess I got a question for both you guys. Why Bitcoin? What got you in here? And obviously, we just got about a minute left, so I, I, you know. Um, I, actually, I was paid to get into it. Actually, <laughs> no, I'm not true. kidding. American Bitpower originally was my client, and uh, I was so impressed with its its business acumen as well as its its potential that I decided to close my own company, buy into this company, and become the new vice president. It was that convincing to totally do a radical shift and uh, change my life. Yeah. And I've just been fascinated by, you know, everything related to cryptography in general. So whenever this started morphing into money, it was just so fascinating. It was really interesting, piqued my interest, and I continue to get into it and follow it kind of from early days. And Eric, 30 seconds. What got you into this? It's, I, I mean, the, the sovereignty of your own money. Uh, you look it around. We were talking a little bit about uh, if you want, uh, you know, a quick turnaround on any type of money right now, you are underneath inflation no matter where you put your money. Except maybe Bitcoin. Hey, Matt, we're going to take a quick time out for the news, brother. So go enjoy some of that Colorado Rocky air. We'll take a quick you time out. It. We'll get the news and weather here in Tulsa. And we'll be back with more of Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. You listen to 1023 KRMG. Welcome back to Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. We are live and local in the big city of Tulsa on 1023 KRMG, Tulsa's News and Talk. My name is Russell Mills. Thank you for joining us this evening. We are digging for digital gold. We're trying to unravel the mysteries and the confusion surrounding Bitcoin and all things cyber current. And there's a lot to, to talk about. Let's talk to a guy who's written a book on the topic and is our host. Please welcome Matthew J. Moore. Hey, thanks, Russell. Uh, you know, if you are listening to this program today and you have questions about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, uh, all the above when it comes to blockchain technology, you got to start somewhere. So why not with this radio show? But you know what? If you want to go a little bit further, if you want somebody to hold your hand, my name is Matthew J. Moore. I love cryptocurrency. I am here to help you and to keep you guys safe. Uh, if you're interested, go to my website, mattjmore.com. Check out some of my content. Um, but I've also got my co-host. He's been doing the show with us for some time now, Eric Cooper. He's in studio. Uh, Eric, why don't you say hello? Once again, hello, all of our uh, fun and friendly listeners, whether you're listening to it live or if you want to go back and you you have found the uh, KRMG.com on demand function and you're listening to this in the future. I kind of feel like a time traveler right now. We appreciate you guys. Um, we have really, really cool people in in the studio. And um, one of the big reasons why we bring folks like Stephen from Vast Bank is he was talking about 
hash rate. And I just want to say that some of the code sourcing, and we won't get into that anymore right now, but some of the code sourcing and some of the original ideas and thoughts that go into Bitcoin happened from a guy here in Oklahoma, and he's here in Tulsa with Vast Bank. And so we're going to welcome him back. And also Chris Ranzel from American BitPower, once again, sold everything he had to hop into the crypto <laughs> space. And so those things yeah. are pretty cool. So again, Chris, you started starting with you. Give us a little recap of yourself, your role with the company and what American BitPower does. Well, American BitPower is specializes in cryptocurrency mining, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and other fun experimental ones we're playing with. And uh, my role as vice president is to kind of make sure the business side of things for all the geniuses around me function smoothly and help bridge the gap between a lot of the other industries who have no idea what a hash rate is and, and try to change some of the language so they can understand it. I, I consider myself uh, uh, a, a personal pope to the uh, mm, process. Like for it. the Catholics out there, they know that's a, a bridge yeah. between uh, people and the truth. Pope Chris the Third, I like it. I like it. <laughs> and uh, and once again, Stephen, you also give us a little. Um, you know, you're with Vast Bank. Tell us a little bit about uh, your chief chief information officer spot and what got you into the space. Yeah, so a big part of uh, the background and kind of how I got involved in this is both on the technology side, on the business side. And one of the important parts to me is in order to make a lot of these things work, you have to have big partnerships. Mm -hmm. And so I helped fund and, and help uh, get the partnership with Coinbase, which is one of the largest exchange, well, the largest exchange in the United States. Yeah. And uh, partnership with us as well as help our teams internally build the teams to hire the right expertise. Because uh, we do have to do, we still have to be regulatory compliant in everything we do. So help train our internal regulators and people that look at things like fraud detection and and uh, money laundering and those kinds of things help train them on how to do that in crypto because it's significantly different, right, to be able to do blockchain analytics and those types of things. So really translating, as Chris said, the the technology side and the business side and bring those two things together and, and make it a successful uh, business endeavor. That's right. And, you know, we can't either confirm nor deny that Stephen <laughs> is Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, but he has been very involved in the technology that makes Bitcoin possible. Uh, but also um, just his involvement in, in the bank and just the stories. And, and this is why we have these conversations is because you, you don't get to have these kind of conversations on a day to day basis with such unique individuals uh, and to talk about relationships that are important. Um, you know, having a bank that's willing to work with a cryptocurrency mining operation. So I guess my my question to you, Chris, is, you know, why is it good to have a relationship with a traditional bank for what you're doing? Well, it, not only is it great to have a relationship with your bank, period, it is so much more important for miners. Most people, and I'm not going to go into the the 35-minute presentation on what, a, what mining does, but we deliver, we are the, a delivering mechanism into the new space, new Bitcoin. So fresh, crisp, mm -hmm. virtually hot off the press. Virgin hot, Bitcoin. Virgin <laughs> Bitcoin, yes. And we have to have a place it can go. And one of the, the amazing parts of this relationship with the Vast Bank is there are going to be, and I, I don't know the exact date, I don't want to misquote, I've heard end of July, yep. uh, a custodian for cryptocurrency, which is really important in this, in this world because normally when we want to move our cryptocurrency from uh, mining into a wallet. We want to go use it. We want to engage. It. We have to go through an exchange. We have to convert it to USD. And there's several steps, and we have to do a wire into a bank. And this cuts out about 50 to 75% of the hurdles and fees and time it takes for us to actually use our fresh, our fresh virgin Bitcoin. Yes. And, 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 you know, you talked a little bit earlier, Stephen, with, uh, you said you want to offer options. So with crypto being a self custody technology, how does a bank fit in and how does vast bank say, you know what, we, we want to kind of, we want to shepherd you and allow you to use us to help me help you type of a thing. If we're doing a little Jerry Maguire here. Yeah, absolutely. And and if you think about the way that most average people want to get involved in this space, they don't want to go reading up on SHA-256 or any other hash rates or any of that detail, right? Um, even learning how to use a, a hardware wallet can be, can be scary. And so the challenge for us is how do we create a really smooth on-ramp, off-ramp for people? And what I mean by that is the process of going from U.S. dollars to crypto and crypto back to U.S. Yeah. dollars. 
And the, the thing is, is that most people that do that with an exchange or some of the, and, and use hardware wallets, think of your hardware wallet as like your physical wallet, like for, for the guys of us that carry one in their pocket, right? So you got cash in there. Are you willing to walk around with $100,000 of cash in your wallet? Most people wouldn't be, right? So what happens when you have a hardware wallet and you start to get real value in that hardware wallet, right? That becomes risky, and so the the point becomes: At what point do you want to have a custodian that you trust, and who's the natural person that you Absolutely. would do that for money as a bank, right? So what we're what we're going to be doing is we're going to be offering that ability to buy and sell crypto, and then be able to custody that and have. Here's the other thing: is most people aren't aware your bank account, fiat bank account, U.S. dollars, is FDIC insured. Right. That's why most people trust it there. There's an extra level of protection. We're going to be one of the first banks that's going to be offering a full um, a, a service that includes insurance as part of that program. So being able to do that and have it and it's safe and it's trusted. Um, you've heard about people losing their wallets, people losing their keys. Um, the ones that you were talking earlier about crypto being lost and it's lost forever. Yeah. Right. What happens if uh, the benefit of having it custodied with a bank is if somebody passes away or has some other thing that happens, you can set up beneficiaries and that can transition. So there's just so many benefits of having a trusted partner in helping yes. manage your wealth. I agree. And I got, well, I, and you know, I'm sorry, man. I just real quick, no, go ahead. Uh, Stephen, the, the whole industry of banking though, is going to have to take a paradigm shift here. Am yep. I wrong? The cheese is no. getting moved because right. Yeah. Great book, by the way. And, and it occurred to me the other day, I was having this conversation with a businessman. I was like, what was the last time you walked into a bank? Yep. Yeah. Right. So the whole concept of what a bank is and how they serve us is shifting. And this yep. is going to be a big part of that. It's absolutely ripe for disruption. The reality yeah. is, uh, you mentioned Cash App in our private session earlier, and you have PayPal and all these other fintech services that are out there. Banks see it as a threat. I mean, it's the reality is the banking industry right now is in protectionist mode. Yeah. And I think we're one of the few banks that said, we want to compete for our customers and we want to bring better value and better services. So I, we have to embrace this space and not try to be protectionist and shut people out. That's obviously, the it is under threat. And so you're not going to have as many banks going forward. So the people who are going to be early adopting like Vast Bank, these are going to be the ones that are still sitting here in 10 years because of the Cash App, because of PayPal, because That's of all That's what this. I was saying. I was thinking yeah. of the guy who, who told American bid power. Hey, we don't want your business anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the guy who told the Beatles, you guys will never make it. Get out of yeah. here. I mean, that guy, that guy in a few years is going to be the, like blockbuster was right. I mean, yeah. those, that same kind of disruption is happening in our industry right now. All right. Well, and when the, when the federal government came out during the Trump administration to give banks the ability to custody crypto, uh, to basically use them as a settlement layer, uh, and to, you know, offer those custodians, you know, custody solutions. Did that, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys as Vast Bank were already kind of turning your wheels at that point, or or was that move at the federal government a uh, huge momentum builder or, or launcher for you guys in, in this direction? We, we were already pushing in that direction. We were there. We were, we were pressing this area. What it did was it became a green light, right? It became, okay. you, you, we knew we were going to want to do this. It became the thing that said, now is the time, right? Now is the time to launch into this. And uh, so when we came out and did those first transactions and published them, um, we obviously wanted to do that in a legal way, but it was the the, the, the formal approval that said we could do that. Is, is the article still on your website, the vast.bank, uh, under the about, there's an article that, that led me to you guys after Matt suggest, suggested a call. Yep, that's right. Is that right. still, still it there? Is, okay, yeah, good. And uh, Brad's, you know, CNBC, Brad went on to, uh, he's the CEO of our bank, uh, went on to CNBC and his is still, re, you know, you can watch that again as well. What's the website? Uh, the CNB one? I can, Your website. Uh, or, uh, sorry, like, vast.bank. Vast.bank. Like it's yeah. really big, V-A-S-T dot bank. That's right. And it, you. you don't need the dot com or anything. So yeah. dot bank um, is a DNS top level domain that is only for banks. And yeah. so you have to be an official bank to Chris, dot bank. how do you personally see the, uh, you know, banks adopting crypto in, in, in the, I mean, in the now, the future? <laughs> well, obviously, I'm watching the, our, our yeah. bank adopt crypto. Um, I'm actually, I'm the son of a, of a bank president, retired bank president. So I grew up literally listening to till two in the morning, uh, debating macroeconomics with him instead of playing catch. That was our uh, father and son bonding. And when you study, when you look at the macro elements, uh, we have passed the tipping point. Bitcoin is inevitable. 
And that, I mean, that sounds you know, very looming over us, but it's true. Yeah. And uh, essentially, it's going to come down to the banks that, that adapt this, which most people are, are thinking this is weird. They have Bitcoin and they have U.S. dollar. I'm like, there's plenty of banks that have uh, U.S. dollars and other fiat currencies. Yeah, International yeah. banks all the time uh, are custodians for multiple currencies. This is not a foreign concept. So this is just a matter of the banks that decide to make this decision. People are going to start flooding the direction. Uh, Stephen, have you seen uh, increase in, in uh, um, I was about to say members, that's more of a credit union term. <laughs> But, right. but clients uh, since the Bitcoin? Yeah, the, the the biggest challenge for us right now, especially on the commercial partnership side, is the demand that's coming at us is is we're talking about how do we address the demand, right? Because oh, it's back. overwhelming, huh? Yeah, and but from a client side, we also have, you know, a lot of challenges with that demand coming on the consumer side as well. All right, and we've got uh, demand to get out of here and do a couple commercials, so we're going to go do that. <laughs> But we'll be back with more of Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. You're listening to 1023 KRMG, Tulsa's News and Talk. Best theme music for a radio show ever. It's Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore. And doesn't it sound modern and exciting? Well, uh, it, this is a very modern thing, and it's a pretty exciting concept. Cryptocurrency and digging for digital gold and, and uncovering some of the mysteries and digging in, figuring out how this stuff really works. That's what this show's about. Our host, who is currently vacationing in Colorado but still working, because that's just how he rolls, is Matthew J. Moore. Good evening, sir. That Hey, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Russell. Uh, this is uh, so much fun. I love doing this. Uh, talking about Bitcoin, uh, huge passion of mine. Um, but we do this show because you, the listeners, might have questions, might be curious about cryptocurrency, the technology behind it. Maybe you want to jump in, but you want to be safe. That's what we're here for. We're here to have a conversation, to bring people to the table who know what they're talking about. Uh, because it, like uh, Russell was saying, this is innovative. This is new. This is technology is going to disrupt a lot of things. And this is one of those technologies. So if you want to be an innovator, if you want to participate in this, uh, and you want, hey, maybe you want to be uh, in on the conversation, Conversation. go to my website, mattjmore.com, submit a question. We'd love to cover a topic that maybe you have interest in. Uh, and if you also uh, would like to be a sponsor, we are looking for sponsors for the show because you know what? It takes things like companies like Vast Bank and American BitPower, who are our guests today on the show. Uh, these companies care. They really care about uh, – Moving into the future and being prepared. Uh, the last few segments we've been talking about, uh, you know, why Vast Bank and why it's important to have a relationship with a bank that's willing and open and ready to be crypto friendly. Uh, in fact, I've got my co-host Eric Cooper with me as well. He's been having this conversation with us, but he's in studio. Eric, why don't you say hello? Yeah, Matt, uh, I'm going to echo it. Once again, um, we chose this radio station because KRMG is phenomenal, right? This is the number one radio station in Northeast Oklahoma, and we have a lot of folks out there who want to make sure that their money is in their own control and they know what's going to happen over the next several years. How many financial shows that we have? This is not Mona V. This is not something that's going to disappear here in a several years. This is getting big. I mean, we're seeing the adoption rate is is starting to get a little bit bigger. I think we're getting close to two percent of people in on cryptocurrency right now. And so, um, if if you have questions, send Matt an email. Do the open mic. We still got the open mic going on, Russell. So um, give us a call. I mean, we have a number you can go on KRMG. I, I actually don't know the number at the off the top of my head, but to call us now, yeah, nine one eight four six zero KRMG. That's four six zero. 5764. And if you got a question, just leave it. We want to answer questions. And Matt, so Matt is not uh, going to give you the timeshare pitch. He wants to educate. And that's where we are We are reaching out right now because I think that younger generations, that they want to be in control. And so they're going to. But we want to deliver some of that control back to some of our current KMG audience. That's very no, long. That's right. Very long hello. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Well, we've got um, Chris Ransdell from American BitPower. He's the vice president. And uh, Stephen, uh, he's from Vast Bank, Stephen Taylor. He is the chief information officer for Vast Bank. Uh, and here's the thing, guys. Uh, I wanted to ask them a question because this is not financial advice. We're not giving financial advice on this show. But can you two share with me in your own way why somebody should consider taking cryptocurrency seriously if they 
are still on the sidelines. So I'll start if you don't mind. All right, cool. Go ahead. Um, so the cryptocurrency market cap is a good way to look at this. So if you go and look at where... That, I was just looking that up right <laughs> now. <laughs> so if you look at where the market cap was two years ago, right, and where it was today, uh, what is it, like 1.4 or something yeah. now? Yeah. Okay. So $1.4 trillion. So it was five hundred. Uh, $500 million about a year ago, so last January. So in a year, the amount of money that's flown, that's gone out of traditional currencies and into cryptocurrencies has gone from $500 million to $1.4 trillion as of today. And that's, that's just Bitcoin. That's and not all of, crypt all of cryptocurrencies, you know, breached $2 trillion. Yeah. Right. So, so I think what we're seeing, right, is money is shifting into this space in a big way, a really big way. Both institutional investors are starting to get into the game. Businesses like our partnership that we have, you know, is is starting to, you're starting to see people like the economy is starting to invest in this space. And so when it does, you know, my reason to take it seriously before it was um, people like me that were technical geeks who wanted to play around in this space and really understand and learn how money could change over time. Money is changing now yes. and, it, and it's real and it's in a real big way. I don't know if you've seen the market cap for silver, but this year we passed the market cap in cryptocurrency passed the full value of silver globally. Right. That's that's that and once again, you don't work for a dot com. You work for a bank. I work for a bank. Thank that's you. insane because silver's been around, you know, forever. Yeah. And right. Bitcoin's been around a few years. Yeah. yeah. A little over a decade. <laughs> Chris, and, how much? How, but how that's much how much has just changed in the last year, right? right. Yeah. And so you, you look at this with, you know, Different countries, El Salvador now, and uh, making a, a you know legal tender in their country, and, and that's why to me you should take this seriously. Well, mine's going to be probably a little more deep in the sense of uh, uh, I'm going to try to avoid the complexities of mining and hash rates here. But uh, I'm, I'm seeing a stability I've never seen before in a currency. If you study the macroeconomics of fiat currency, it's built on the faith you have in your government, the faith you have in their military, the faith you have in their leadership. And I don't care what side of the fence you're on in politics. Right now, faith in our, in our government is, is depleting and it is waning. And therefore, the, the trust in our money and the value of our money is waning. This does not depend on anything other than the democ democratic voice of the people that buy it. We tell Bitcoin what it's worth. We tell Bitcoin what, what it can do. And Bitcoin does not have leadership behind it. It doesn't have an army behind it. It doesn't have a you know, country borders behind it. It doesn't have an agenda. Exactly. Yeah. It is completely and utterly just digital currency that exists, uh, that gives value to its, you know, we give its value. And so that's where I think the strength comes from. And, and most people with the, 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 the recent correction, everybody thought, oh, no, this is going down. Year to year, we're still up 272% versus where it was at this time last year. Oh, yeah. I mean, actually, there's some people Bitcoin. that uh, there was yeah. there is, there is certain periods of time you could buy last year, your Forex in one year. Yeah. And, and so, Stephen, you may not be able to share with any future plans Vast Bank has um, when it comes to crypto space, but... Um, what can you share? What can you share? Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you the things that we've talked about publicly. And, and those are that we are launching a side-by-side -side account that you'll be able to open a bank account that will be able to have U.S. dollars and crypto. And we'll have an app and, and all the things you would expect of a modern banking experience uh, live in the same account. With customer service. With customer service. That's something that mm. we're going to be launching imminently. And, and one of the, with all the things that you guys have probably seen on the news about ransomware, we're, we're beating the crap out of it with, you know, <laughs> yeah. with, with uh, cybersecurity kind of attacks. Just to, we want to really make sure that this is truly, you know, absolutely secure. But you're going to be able to buy and sell crypto. Then right after that, we're working on, you know, the custodian pieces that we talked about. But uh, that's what we're going to be launching imminently. Uh, we already are live with those set of service, some of those set of services with a partner of ours called Investor, I-N-V-S-T-R. Um, but this this is what we're working on, and it's imminent. Chris, you got like 30 seconds. What about uh, American BitPower? Oh, I would just say right now, American BitPower would love to, you know, officially endorse Vast here. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we, we've, we've had incredible experiences from day one. It's easy to open your account. It's They're easy to work with. And uh, of course, they, they love cryptocurrency, which is a big, big, and they have a beautiful downtown Tulsa uh, six story uh, building. That's right. Yeah, Just moved there, in this year. Right next yes, to the ballpark. Beautiful. So, yeah. yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. Well, if you if you guys are listening to the show and you've enjoyed it and you have any interest, uh, you know, reach out to me, mattjmore.com. I'm here to help. I'm here to inspire. I'm here to educate and keep you guys safe. Uh, we definitely want to spread the message and hope that Bitcoin and the, the possibilities that crypto has to offer. So join us every week on Sundays at five to have these conversations uh, real quickly. Where can everybody find you, Chris and Steven? Uh, well, you, you can find me at AmericanBitPower.com or email me at Ransdell at AmericanBitPower.com. And um, I'm Stephen.Taylor at Vast.Bank. And I uh, will mention that if you go to Vast.Bank, go to the crypto page, you can sign up to there hear you. about when we launch. Awesome. Vast.Bank. There you go. And American Bit Power is the name of Chris's company. You can Google that and you'll find them at AmericanBitPower.com. My name is Russell Mills. You've been listening to Cryptocurrency with Matthew J. Moore, live and local in the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, becoming a Bitcoin capital of the world. We'll see you right here next Sunday at 5.